tell you what the ultimate promise of God is. It's why Jesus was manifest in the earth. He said, I was manifest in the earth to destroy the works of the devil. The ultimate promise of God is that you would defeat the devil. You would find a way to take him out. And there are people stationed all over the earth we are finding out, whether it's in politics, government, home, school, economy, whatever mountain of influence they're on, they are being positioned to find a way to take him out. And if you go to Psalm 92, you find out it's really already been done. We have to walk it out when the wicked spring up as grass. And that's what it seems like from time to time. And when all of the workers of iniquity seem to flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, O oh Lord, are most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies are Lord, O uh, oh Lord. For lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. Mine eye also shall see my desire on my enemies and my ears shall hear of my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. When we create an atmosphere of faith through prayer, through the word, and through our decrees, anything is possible. And anything is possible because God through his word says that we can expect nothing but the goodness of God. That's why I chose that song. And the key word in all of this is accuracy and it's accuracy in the earth realm and by uh, connecting in with Jill and that thing that went on and now we got this movie and all these things that are happening in the earth right now we find out that we need to be accurate in the realm of the uh, spirit just like a, a couple of weeks ago I was talking to a couple of uh, pilots and they said that reading the instruments and following the uh, flight pattern uh, causes you to be accurate so you can be free from mistakes and free from error. How many mistakes have we made? How many paths have we got on that really weren't a, a good path? We're going to learn today how to be accurate in the realm of the spirit. And then I remember having conversations with Tanner. And Tanner went to K-State in the engineering school. And he, was, he would always come home and he would tell us that he was learning to be accurate in all of his calculations. Otherwise, whatever they were building, whatever they were constructing, it would not support the structure so we must be accurate say accuracy so accuracy in our spiritual life is a, is is key for that nothing but goodness shall follow us all the days of our life let me tell you an accurate decree that was made in the beginning and god births out things Genesis 1 God bursts out things in the earth realm through a decree we've talked about it for years let there be light and there was light that was obviously an accurate decree and now we're moving to a higher level of faith concerning these decrees and we know that I'm all about it decree a thing and it will be established but what is my decree really doing is it accurate so then of all things I remember Gabriel coming to Mary and announcing what's going to happen to her it was a prophetic decree from Isaiah about a virgin conceiving and that decree was made 700 years before for that and after he told her you know about Elizabeth she's pregnant too uh, Gabriel says and he makes a decree with God nothing 
is impossible. So if nothing is impossible, then a virgin really can uh, have a baby. So that's an amazing decree. Tell your neighbor, I want a decree like that. And that amazing, very accurate decree that Isaiah made didn't happen for 700 years, became the foundation, as Tanner would say, the foundation upon which the kingdom of God would rest on because Isaiah also said, there is one that is coming and the government of God will rest on his shoulders. On the heels of that decree, then Mary makes an incredible never before decree. Well, then be it unto me. They don't even have a frame of reference. You and I have got a frame of reference. That she didn't have a frame of reference, and it all started 700 years ago. And that incident there in Luke chapter 2 was not some random thing that happened. If you go back and you understand what was going on in Isaiah's time, there was a coalition of two kings and they they were going to attack Jerusalem and the prophet Isaiah got involved. He got involved and he and and there were because he got Involved, there was a coalition of evil that was aligning against the nation. And that is going on right now. So I'm just going to say some stuff today because that coalition of evil is coming against us as a nation, as a family, as a church. So, he, so Isaiah said this. He said it to the king of Judah. I think his name was Ahaz. He said, stay calm. Don't don't panic. You've got a prophetic word that your descendant David got. And his dynasty would last forever. So yeah, you've got a coalition of enemy kings coming against you. But you've got a prophetic word in your history that your dynasty is going to last forever. That was a decree that was working and it was waiting for its moment and an intersection of time. And we always need to remember this, no word spoken by God is without power to perform it. The power is in the word. That decree was alive and it was moving and it was working and it was in the queue. And then Isaiah said the coalition coming against you isn't going to work. But let me tell you the key to all this. Here's what Isaiah said. Okay, they got the enemies coming against them. There's these two big kings. Israel's just this little tiny nation. They don't, they don't even have any weapons. They don't have anything going for them. And Isaiah says, be quiet. Shut up. Fear not. Don't be faint-hearted. There is evil counsel coming against you and I'm telling you there's just voices everywhere and they're going to try to take you out but that's not going to stand neither is that going to come to pass but he's, he gave them a warning if you will not believe I mean there's just some people and some of them are even in our they just won't believe I just, I just don't believe that I just don't believe in God. I don't believe there's all that. I don't believe there's anything like that going on. I don't believe, if you will not believe, you will not be established. And so Isaiah said to Ahaz, the the king of Judah that was being attacked, he said, ask for a sign. Now I'm fixing to say something. Ask for a sign. And now Ahaz, he was a little bit religious, and he said, oh, I'm not going to ask for a sign. That's like tempting the, the Lord. And, and so Isaiah says to Ahaz, you, you're just exhausting me. Well, Isaiah says, 
God's going to give you a sign anyway. Say thank you. Thank you. You know, sometimes we can just get so messed up in all of our what we think we know and what we think we got to have and all of that religious jargon. And, and so Isaiah says, pretty much told him to shut up. And he said, I'm, God is going to give you a sign anyway. And here's how the sign came. And it is a now famous prophetic decree. On the heels of a coalition of evil kings coming against a nation, Isaiah coming in there and saying, shut up and don't fear, and, and as for us, well, don't be so relentless, and just on and on and on, he said, here is the sign that God is going to give you. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, God is with us. Now, what the heck did that have to do with the enemy coming against him? Remember, we've got to move to a higher level of faith concerning the power of decrees. And right there, that right there brought my faith up. Those, that enemy, those enemy kings did not come against Jer Jerusalem. So prophetic degree, decrees or prophetic words, it was a prophetic word. They're moving and they're waiting and they're watching for uh, agreement. So we're going to be in agreement with the prophetic word that happened 700 uh, years ago. And in the middle of that 700 years, there's 400 years that most possibly God didn't even speak to them. And some people were in unbelief and they say things like this. This is how you can know if somebody's in unbelief or if you are in unbelief. And you say things like, well, you know, I'm just not sure about that. Well, I'm just going to put that on the shelf. I'm not sure about all those people that are accused of sex trafficking and pedophiles and, and traffickers and LGBTQ and transgender and transhumanism. Oh, and the latest one is AI, Nasara and Jasara. I just don't know. See, that'll get me knocked off right there. I just don't know. If I could go that far and believe all of that. And I just say we've got to have sharp discernment because the prophetic is at the forefront of the stream that we are in. And just because you can't figure it out and just because, I'm just talking to myself, and just because you can't understand it and just because the people that you listen to never talk about any of those things, Listen, Isaiah never heard of such a thing as putting it on the shelf. Yeah, Isaiah didn't say anything about a shelf. Here's what he did say. He said, if you don't believe, you won't be established. Shout, I believe. The accuracy of a pilot to read the instruments or if they're low enough to see the land, will determine pretty much life or death. And the accuracy of an engineer on, on building a foundation of a building as to whether that building would stand. So I want to say the accuracy of the prophetic word, the accuracy of the word of God down to even 700 years ago, down to a young engaged virgin girl, down to the man that she's engaged to is of the house of David that he said to that guy from, to the king of Jerusalem, you're of the house of David and God has said that di dynasty will live forever. Accurate down to them going to Bethlehem to pay their taxes, but oops, they're having a baby. Accurate decrees takes us to places in the realm. Now, I said all, that was just my introduction. Now I'm going to say what I came to say. Accurate decrees 
take us places in the realm of the spirit that will cause us to have victory every single time. Say amen. We are in a powerful moment in, in time. Don't be discouraged. You, you see it everywhere. You can see it on the faces of people. And then they want to argue about what you know and what they think they know. Don't be discouraged. Now listen, I'm going to go to Job 22, 28. You know I love this. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. You know I love that. I have preached this off and on for years. But what the, the Holy Spirit said, Sandy, back up. Back up. I'm going to tell you about how to be accurate in this stuff because I have decreed a thing and it wasn't established. So I backed up to verse 21. Listen to what it says. And I'll, I'll send you these notes. I know people are trying to write notes and all, all of this stuff. I'll send them to you. Verse 21 says, acquaint yourself with God. Acquaint yourself with God. Become familiar with God. About the time, and the reason he says that, about the time that you think you know God, he reveals something new about himself. And it's almost like you start over. Acquaint yourself with God. Now, I'm working my way to decree a thing. But I'm wondering why my decrees are not accurate. Acquaint yourself with God. Become familiar with Him. The vastness of God is infinite, and there's always more and more and more and more with God. So you could never exhaust our becoming acquainted with God. Then it says in the next verse, okay, acquaint yourself with God and stay at peace oh there's so much evil God. how could you stay in I'm talking about how to be accurate in our decrees I'm talking about being in a moment in this place right now where the accuracy of our decree is going to burst something in the earth called the harvest of God so stay at peace then it goes on in the next verse to say, receive the word of God and not only receive the word of God because we hear the word of God every time we come in here or 24 seven, you can get on YouTube or anybody's website and hear a, an, a, a word from God. It's another thing. He doesn't just say receive the word of God. Job says, and lay up his words in your heart. That is when you would meditate on it and you would memorize it and you would go over and over. So you're not only receiving the word of God, you are laying up the word of God in your heart. I'm on my way to verse 28. I'm on my way to decree a thing and it will be established. There is a progression. The definition of decree is an order having the force of law. An order having the force of law. So when you become a decreer, now I don't even know if that's such a word, but when you become a decreer in the spirit, because a judge can make a decree, a, a lawyer can make a decree, that, and and, and, and it, it, you have the, the force of the law behind you. You have the force of the government behind you. But when you have, when you're a decreer in the spirit, you have the force of heaven backing you up. I know, and I'm going to listen to that uh, video that Jill was the same last night. I know they made decrees, apparently, all night. And the force of heaven, the angels of heaven were backing, their up, backing them up. 
the decree is something that by the word of God and because you've got the word of God in your heart you know that it's ordained by God and you've gotten close enough to God to trust God enough to say it and believe it will happen you decree it you're making a demand with all of heaven behind you a decree is like a command so here it is we've got an acquainted enough with God to trust him to back up that decree because he started it in the first place and then there's this little thing so there's three or four things right there acquaint yourself with God stay in peace receive the word lay up the word in your heart then he says some benefits of that now we're just still on our way to decree a thing so we've got some things we need to do acquaint ourselves stay at peace receive the word lay up the word in your heart and then he says you as a result of all that we're not even to decree a thing he said you're gonna work walk in prosperity Remember that little scripture and the and the gold and the silver are going to be like dust underneath your bed. Come on. We're not we don't even have to decree that. That is acquaint yourself with God, stay in peace, uh, lay up the word in your heart and you are going to walk in prosperity and not only that, almighty God will be your defense. If his word is in your heart, he will defend that word. That's what he's looking for, the word that is laid up on the inside of you. He'll defend that word. You will delight in the almighty God. Now, here, here's another thing. We're on our way to decree a thing. So we, so we acquaint ourselves with the word. We stay in peace. We receive the word. We lay it up. Now we're going to walk in prosperity and he is going to be our defense he will defend his word then he says you lift up your face unto God you lift up you come face to face which is what worship is you become face to face with God I'm just, I'm just reading the scriptures. You become face to face with God. You'll make your prayer unto him and he will hear you. And you will pay your vows. Or you, the promises that you've made to God. Or the offerings that you want to uh, give to God. Now, I'm on my way to decree a thing. So those last things are, you're not even going to have to worry about. You're going to walk in prosperity. He is going to be your defense. He is going to defend his word that now you've laid up in your heart. You are going to lift your face up to God. You are going to make your prayer to him, and he will hear you. And I, I just thought to myself, I can prove that by the word, John 10, 10. You shall, and, oh, well, no, let's go back to this. You pay your vows, and then we get to decree a thing, and it says, thou shall also decree a thing. That's when I knew that there was an also to this. That is why all that stuff is done, and now also you will decree a thing so let me just say this out of John 10 10 so now we're going from Job to John 10 10 and I'll, I'll just make this statement decreeing and, and this will become very clear through even some of your own situations and the conversations that you have with people John 10 10 says uh, that the Lord is our good shepherd. He's our good shepherd. 
the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you would have life and you would have it in abundance. So decreeing is disagreeing. I disagree with the thief coming to steal, kill, and destroy. So, so decreeing is disagreeing and agreeing at the same time. And it's there in that one verse, 10, 10, where it says that I, I'm your good shepherd. And the thief comes, like, like, a, like, a, like a real shepherd out there taking care of those sheep. A thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we disagree with the thief, and we agree with the life and the abundant life. So when an attack comes, no matter what it is, whether it's this young woman, whether it is sickness, whether it is a bill you can't pay, whether it is fear that just is looming over you, you've got so much discouragement, you're just mad at everybody or every, everything, and it's just all a mess, so I'm just going to call it an attack. So when an attack comes, you make a decree and you disagree with the attack. The Holy Spirit is taking us to a new level in the spirit. Now, I'm just going to say it. Where we can run things for him. Woo! Thou shalt also decree a thing. After we acquaint ourselves with God, after we stay in peace, after we receive the word of God like we're receiving the word of God, then you go home and you think about it and you listen to it again later on this week and you lay it up in your heart and, and then you just, wow, you walk in prosperity and God is my defense and he'll defend the word and I'm just worshiping him and becoming face to face with him. I lift my face up to him. I make my prayer uh, to, to him, and I'm paying my vows, what are, wh whatever those things are, I promise God, whatever those offerings are that I want to give to God. Now, also, I decree a thing, and it says after that, thou shalt also decree a thing, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. There's so much darkness out there. So, the light shall shine upon thy ways when you also decree a thing. And it says this, when men are cast down, you shall say there's a lifting up. In other words, everything going on right now, all that evil that I mentioned, all of that perversion that I mentioned. It is all depressing. It is contrary to the word of God. LGBTQ, transgender, gender mutilation, abortion, child trafficking, human trafficking, pedophilia, population control, prices, shortages, the lies and the lists go on. The endless list, I'll just make a decree right now, is about to find out that you and I have authority over it. When men are cast down, you shall say there is a lifting up. The endless list cannot overrule our decree. God wants you to know what to disagree with. Do your due diligence and don't let people put lies in your atmosphere. You disagree with it. Decreeing is disagreeing and agreeing at the same time. So that why? So that what you agree with will come to pass. So what's been put in this atmosphere this morning? Is this good? Are you getting anything out of it? Authority and anointing have entered this atmosphere. And they are being produced in this place. And you will walk out with authority and with anointing because 
you know who you are. And you know how to pray. You know what to disagree with and what to agree with. And then, so we, we're in Job 22, then we're in John 10.10, 10, and then I just thought about this, because in all of the, I just want to have that kind of confidence. You, you know, I'm up here preaching right now, but will I have confidence on Tuesday when the list shows up in my life? The endless list of stuff. And so, remember, there is, um, you'll make, your, 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 you'll be face to face with God. He will defend his word. He will be your defense and you will make your prayer to him. Now, prayer and making decrees are two different things. So, you will make your prayer to him and he will hear you. Help me. Help me with the word. You know I like to go to the word. Well, how about 1 John 5? And this is the confidence. Now, this is what I'm talking about. And this is the con I just want to have confidence, don't you? I want to know what to disagree with. I want to know what to agree with because I want this thing to be established. And I want light on my path on, on all my ways. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything, well, if you got that thing going on, you acquaint yourself with God, you stay at peace, you receive the word of God, you lay up the word of God in your heart. You are face to face with him because you know whatever happens, he's going to defend you. He's going to defend the word. You're, you, you are going to worship him and then you make your prayer to him. And he said, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, and we're going don't worry about what you ask because you're acquainting yourself with him you're getting to know him you're staying at peace no matter what crap is going on in the earth or in your very own life or whatever it is and you're laying up the word in your heart and all of that and and if we know he hears us whatever we ask we know we will have oh my gosh what we have asked of him. And I know these people on that stage last night, they, they, they may not know all of, all of this exactly, but they were living it out. And they, whatever, they had confidence that if they sent the angels, they, they you know, they, they would find that, that girl. So, so we'll just say this, decreeing then is backed up by by heaven. It is a command. God is looking for someone that will run the earth for him. He's not here. You know what I'm saying. I mean, I know he does come and I know he shows up and all of that stuff, but he, he said, I'm going to build an ecclesia. I'm going to build a church. And the gates of hell are not going to prevail. So here we are, and it looks like they're prevailing. But I am also decreeing. Decreeing is saying something, making a command, not praying about it. We've prayed already. We've had fellowship with God. And then here's what happens amongst all of that. You acquaint yourself with God, and you get to know him, and you stay at peace, and you receive his word, and you lay his word up on the inside of you, and you come face to face with him, and then you make your prayer unto him. And we know we have this confidence that he's heard us because we're praying the perfect will of God, and he hears us. And if we know he hears us, then we can have whatever it is that we ask. And when you got all of that going on, here's what happens. Then, in that place with God, 
He sends you on an assignment to tell the situation what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you how this thing is going to come out. You are then what happens, you're not moved. You're not moved by physical evidence. Now, I know we've all got a little bit of pain here, and Dr. Eddie's got a stress fracture, and then we got die, and she can't even move. And then we've got restless legs, and then, then we've got all, all the stuff, and we've got receding gums back there in the, uh, her daughter. And uh, so we've got all these situations, and all, all of the, we've got a lot of physical evidence. And then, so we're not going to be moved by that. Now we're going to take care of ourselves. We're going to do what we need to do. And Deanne is drugs up so that her legs won't jump. And maybe Dr. Eddie's got a little suggestion there. Right. <laughs> so we're not going to be moved by physical evidence, Maggie. We're not going to be, and bless her heart, she fell down and hurt her knees so bad. And she texted me a couple of weeks ago and says, oh, I just don't think I can... I can, I can, my, my knee is swelled up and I, I fell down and blah, blah, blah. And I said, you need to come to church. And you know what she did? And she was used of God to bless our Native American friends that were here, Martin and Rock, and to, to bless them with a, a blanket and uh, even with her physical uh, situation there. We're not going to be moved by this demonic evidence that we're seeing everywhere. Because why? Because we know that we have authority in God. We have authority to act and decree and command and rule for God. So when people come to you and they begin to talk about the endless list you talk to them as one in authority. You disagree. I'm not talking about having a fight, but maybe so. I, do, I don't know. You work that out. But I am talking about on the inside. I'm not agreeing with that. There is a God. I serve God. That whole agenda is wrong. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with abortion. I don't agree with pedophilia. I don't agree with any of that. And the revelation that we're having this morning is going to be the solution to everything that's holding us back. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. We're just going to decree our way out of it. So stand to your feet. Lift your hands, shut your eyes if you want to, and say this after me. I acquaint myself with you, God. I will stay at peace. I receive the word of the Lord today. I say I will lay it up in my heart. I will walk in prosperity. You will be my defense, God. You will defend your word. I am going to walk face to face with you, God. I have confidence that you answer my prayer. I have confidence that you will hear me. I will pay my vows. And you can count on me, God, to decree a thing and it shall be established. And light will be on my path. I disagree and agree at the same time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. you